Over the next several videos, we're going to be taking a look at directories in Linux. And this is a very, very important topic because if you're going to be learning about Linux, you're going to be dealing with directories quite a bit. Now, if we take a look at this diagram here, Linux is organized in a hierarchical directory structure. So the best way to think of it is you have a main branch and then you have all of the small branches hanging off of that main branch. And the directory hierarchy in Linux always starts at root. And that is identified by this forward slash right here. Now, this is a forward slash, not a backslash. So that's really the key point I want to make right there. And then you can see all of these directories hanging off the main root directory. You can see here we have bin, dev, lib, home, sys, temp, user, and var. We will talk about all of these directories that hang off of the root directory, but over the next several lectures, we're actually just gonna be talking about the home directory. And the home directory basically holds all of the personal directories for whatever user is logged into that Linux session. And you would store several different files here. You might store music files or video files, things like that. And when a user logs in, a folder is created for whatever username he or she logged in with. And pretty much all Linux installations will conform to this standard. And we'll be taking a look at this in a minute. So again, you have the root directory right here, which is identified by a forward slash, and then you have all the directories that hang off of root. Now, in many respects, this is very similar to Windows. If you've used Windows, you're very familiar with the C drive. And in Windows, that is the root directory, and then you have a bunch of folders that hang off of the C drive. The difference is that Windows uses a drive letter, whereas Linux does not do that. And of course, the drive letter here is C. The other big difference is that in Windows, you can have multiple drives. So you might have a D drive, an F drive, and so on. And those drives have their own folders. In Linux, that is not the case. All of the directories hang off of the root directory. There are no separate drives like there are in Windows. So that's a really big difference right there. So if we open up our terminal, let's go ahead and list out the contents. And there you can see all the directories and files that are in our home directory. Now, if we pull up the diagram again, you can see here, this is the home directory right here. This represents this home directory right here on this branch. And the home directory, again, hangs off of root. And how do we know we're in the home directory? Again, it's identified by this tilde sign right here. Now, if we were to open up files here on the left in Ubuntu, and we open up the home, you can see this corresponds to what we have in the terminal. Take a look at that. We have a desktop, we have a documents. They both correspond to each other. So again, you can see we have the same files and folders. Now, one question you might ask, well, why don't I just use this GUI right here? Well, the reason is later on, we're gonna get into servers and Linux servers primarily do not use a GUI. Pretty much everything you do in a Linux server, you're going to be using the terminal. And the second reason is it's just more efficient. You can do a lot more things in the terminal than you can in the Linux GUI. So that is the main reason. So let's go ahead and close this out. So what we're first gonna do is learn how to make a directory and we use the mkdir command. So you type in mkdir and then you just specify the name of the directory. In this case, we're just gonna call this test. So go ahead and hit enter. And since we're already in the home directory, that directory should have been created inside of our home directory. So let's go ahead and list out the contents and see what we get. And there you can see right there, we have our test directory. Now, in order to change directories in Linux, you use the CD command. So if you type in CD and you type in test and go ahead and hit enter, you can see now we change directory to the test. And if you take a look at here at our prompt, it now shows us that we are now inside the test directory. And let's go ahead and make a directory inside the test directory. And let's call this test again. Then let's go ahead and change directory so that we can go inside that test again directory. And now you can see we are inside the test again directory, which is inside the test directory. And the test directory, of course, resides in the home directory. And you can see that slashes are used to identify the subdirectory. So the home directory is right here. Then we have a slash right here that identifies a subdirectory, which of course is test. And then we have another slash here that identifies another subdirectory, which is test again. So that's the way it works. Now, what if we wanted the full path of the directory that we're in? What if we wanted to see the full path? And this is actually called the absolute path. And we'll talk about this in future lectures, what an absolute path is, what a relative path is. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and list out the path that we're currently in. And to do that, you type in PWD. And there you can see it listed out the entire path. Now let's break this down. 
This first slash here, this actually represents the root directory right there. And as we talked about, that's always identified by a forward slash. And as we know, the home directory hangs off of the root directory. So that is the next directory. This next slash is a slash that identifies a subdirectory. And in this case, it is Ernie. Now remember, I said the home folder will contain a folder for the user. And in this case, my username is Ernie. So that's the folder that gets created. And then we have another slash, which represents a subdirectory. And that subdirectory is test. And we just created that a few minutes ago. And then we create created another subdirectory inside the test directory called test again, and that is identified right here by this forward slash. So now you know how to get an absolute path. This is the absolute path that we are currently in. Now, if you want to switch back to the home directory, you just type in CD and you do not put in a directory name. And there you can see, now we're back in our home directory. And let's actually go ahead now and show the absolute path by typing PWD again. And there you can see, we're in our home directory, which is Ernie. And again, that is identified by this tilde right here. Okay, we will continue on with directories in the next video. Thank you.